What's up guys? Today we're going to be doing a breakdown of Mayweather style pad work because many people they see him in action and they just don't really understand what he's doing when he hits pads. So I have my student Benja who's going to come in. He's going to help me today demonstrate because there's no way I can possibly give you guys a full demo of this pad work, this style, without somebody helping me. So let's roll the intro and we'll get to Mayweather style pad work. All right, so what we're gonna do for this style of pad work is we have to learn five different combinations. The thing you'll notice about Mayweather is, Benji, you can jump in a stance. It's not a stop and go kind of pad work style. So if I call for Benja, jab, cross, hook, he never has that pause in between. It's always flowing. And you can skip square back up there. And what we're gonna be trying to do here is teach you guys the five combinations, how you call for the next combination while you're in the middle of the past one, and then from there, build this entire style. And this is gonna be slow going, but if you have a pad holder and you have somebody that you can follow along with, you can actually get this done. So we have names for each combination. The first one is called touch. And for touch, you have a shoulder tap off the jab. We use this right here, a nice easy indication to just hold this position until the cross hand comes up. When the cross hand comes up, he throws there, then he rolls under, cross, hook, cross. What you're gonna notice in this pad work and when you watch Mayweather is many of his combos finish with cross hook cross. It's just something that's in all of them. So you will notice that over and over. For this style, if you wanna get comfy with it, you can just go touch, touch, touch. And you can just get that same motion over and over. You just do it with me, Benja, we'll go this way. We go jab and we throw a cross then we roll under cross hook cross and we just let that combination flow that little indication of the shoulder coming out tells him to go but I can also always call out the combo while he's in the middle of the other one so as he's going through touch right here I could say touch so he knows to come right into it touch now this is very simple because we're only working one combo but once we start putting the five together he has to really think hard to keep up with what's happening Let's move into combo number two. For combo number two, this is called cover. I'm gonna take my right hand, I'm gonna swing at his head, kind of like a cross is coming towards. Benja's gonna use his elbow to block and come back again with cross hook cross. So I could go cover, cover, touch, cover, cover, touch, cover, and you see how he didn't take a break there. Now this style of pad work, you're gonna know Benja's not like, oh God. he's not breathing hard because he's not hitting super hard. And you notice that with Mayweather too. You might not even know this, the guy, he's one of the best in the world, Floyd Mayweather. Mm -hmm. He has really bad hand issues. His knuckles are always getting bruised and broken. I don't know if broken, but they're always getting damaged. So he can't hit really hard all the time. So apparently this was a style of pad work that he utilizes to make sure that he can put in the work and he does this fast and hard and he's activating his brain, but he's not hurting his hands constantly. All right, next combo to add in is called money. We call it money because of Floyd. I don't know if he calls it this or not, but for money, he fades back. Benja's gonna fade back on my jab, come back with the counter cross. He repeats that again, and then he rolls under when he's done, back to cross hook cross. So if I call money, fade back, fade back, under, cross hook cross, fade back, fade back, under, cross, or cross. Now I'm gonna put all three together now. We have touch, cover, and money. And Benja will give you a little demo of just getting this down. This is not something that Benja trains a lot. We haven't done this in what, like a month or two, and we yeah. do it once every two or three months. So this is brand new for him as well. So he's sort of picking it up as we go along. So just watch him, but be impressed because he's just picking this up in the moment. So touch, touch, cover, Cover, touch, money. Touch, and just like that, now all of a sudden we're starting to flow. You're making that look really good. What we can also add in, which we're not doing now because of our space limitations, is movement. So I could be circling around and getting him to follow me or backing him up or making him push forward, and that adds a whole additional element 
to it, which complicates things that much more. Okay guys, so far we have down three combinations. We have touch, cover, and we have money. Now the next ones are no, there's no verbalization. I just tap towards the body and Benja's gonna come back with a long piece combo. This is a seven piece combo. I touch his body and we always come back with uppercut off that. I think that's pretty standard for everybody. So Benja's gonna come back with the uppercut. Same hand comes back with the cross. From there, hook cross. And then to finish it, hook, hook cross. And what you can do is just repeat this. So we go again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 And you might need to just roll that through time and time again until it really starts to become muscle memory. But remember, blocking a shot and then coming back with an uppercut, boom, that's a good muscle memory to form. So it doesn't matter if you go block, upper hook, cross, or you go through this long drawn out combo, it's still a good thing to build. So now if we put everything together, we have four combinations to work. If I start with that one, I don't have to say anything, but in the middle I can call it for touch. Money. Cover. Touch. Good. And now we have one more to add. The last one is the most unorthodox of them all. And we're gonna go double body tap. So normally we just go one and we get a response from him. But today we're gonna go one and then two. From there he's gonna go uppercut like we just did, but now he's gonna come with a left uppercut. From there he's gonna come hook cross, starting with the lead arm. That's an unorthodox combination, but it's really good to add in things that are odd. So I come one, two, body, or sorry, head, head, and head, and there we go. One, two, upper, upper, hook, cross. One, two, upper, upper, hook, cross. And you just wanna drill this until you don't have to really think about it too much. It shouldn't just come in an instance. This is an odd combo which takes time to build up to. One of the reasons, I'm sure you find this, Benjo, like if I hold pads for you and I'm like double jab, double jab cross, you probably don't have to engage your brain that much because you're so used to it. Maybe if I go to Benja and like double jab cross, hook cross, body hook, head hook, I give him something like that, that'll challenge him. But normal pad work is too easy for Benja. But this style of pad work is really gonna challenge your brain. Because like we said, not only is he throwing a combo for touch, but now I'm calling for cover. And now I'm calling for money. And he's always having to react to the combo that we're throwing while already thinking of what the next one is. And it's just a whole different mix of, of challenging aspects of pad work. So now we're gonna try and put everything together. All right, nice and slow. This can just be a chill pad work, an end of workout sort of pad workout. Everything together, touch, touch. Cover, money, touch. And it looks something like that as you start progressing more and more. Very difficult, he's making this look a lot easier than it actually is. And also in terms of holding, this is very difficult as well. When I learned this, I was on your side and somebody else was holding for me. And yes, I was making mistakes, but they were also making mistakes. It took me a while to learn how to hold and then being able to hit is, they're both difficult. So don't beat yourself up if this is getting a little difficult and you find it slow going in the learning curve. So guys, that is everything that I wanted to teach you today about the Mayweather style pad work. Thank you, Benja, for joining and helping teach everybody what we need to know. Remember, it's chill. It's nice, relaxed pad work. It's not banging hard. This is about engaging your brain and really working on footwork and all those little slips and just getting everything as precise as possible, just like we see Floyd Mayweather do. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you haven't already, join the channel, get subscribed, train hard, and see you back here soon for another video.